In today's tutorial, I'm going to deal with a JavaScript problem I've encountered on more than one occasion. And that is, how can I hide or obfuscate my JavaScript code? Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. So let me give you a scenario for this problem. Let's say you have a client that wants to make some of the JavaScript code or all of the JavaScript code difficult to see or copy. How would you do that? There are a couple of reasons I have encountered this with clients I've worked with. For example, they may want to hide an API key that is used as a part of the code. Or they may want to hide the answers to questions that are part of the JavaScript code. They don't want someone to be able to easily find those if they know how to view the JavaScript code from the browser. And another reason may simply be they don't want someone else copying the JavaScript code, which I don't particularly like that reason, but it has happened. Now, generally, the solution I use to obfuscate code is using a couple of sites. They provide a way to do it rather easily. Now, obfuscate is simply a fancy word for making something unclear or obscure. And so basically, that's what it does. It uses JavaScript to make it unclear. So it's not easy to see what's going on. Now, an important thing to remember here, this is not a security solution. It is a simple way to use JavaScript to hide JavaScript. As you will see, if you know JavaScript well, you could piece things back together, but it would be difficult. So let's take a look at this. OK, so here I have a little bit of JavaScript code. I have an API key, and I have an object that theoretically has answers to a question. And these are things that I want to hide. I want to hide both of these, because these are used throughout the rest of the code. And I just want to make sure this part is hidden. So let's look at how we would do that. First thing, as I mentioned, I use two different sites. So let's go to the first site. I copy that code. And then JavaScript Obfuscator is the first site that I use. And so what I do is the code that I want to obfuscate, I paste in this field over here. Now, I could choose an entire file if I had an entire file that I wanted to do that with. But for our example, we'll just paste it in here. And then I simply click the Obfuscate button. And here is the resulting JavaScript code. Now, this is JavaScript. So we can simply put that back in our JavaScript file, and it will run. And it will run as if it were this. Because basically what's happening here is it's setting up an array. Notice we're declaring a variable here, setting it equal to an array. Here's the end of that array. And then it's escaping characters. And so it's using an escape key sequence for all the characters that are used throughout this code. Now notice down here, after the array is finished, we have let API key equal. And it's equal to that variable we set up here, position one of the array. And so that would be all of this. And so it's the same code that's here, except it's using escape sequence to represent those letters and numbers and characters. You can also see when it defines the object here, let answers equal, and then defines an object. Q1 equals true. It doesn't do anything about that. But then Q2 it's, gets the second position in the array, which happens to be A. So this, like I said, you can piece this back together. Let me show you how, how you would do that. Let me scroll up a bit. Now I'm going to open up the console on this site. Scroll up the console a bit. Let me get back to where I was looking at some of those. So the very first escape character here is slash x36. So if we simply type that string into the console, it will tell us what it is. It will return what that represents. And it's a 6. It's the very first part of this API key. All right. If we go down to x41, that should be equal to A, capital A. And as you can see, when I type this in, 
That's exactly what it's equal to. So these escape sequences can be figured out, but it makes it a little bit more difficult. So here's the first part of obfuscating the code. Now what I do is I copy this, I go back into my JavaScript file, and I paste it in here. I don't get rid of the original yet until I've got it all taken care of. But then I will use a second site. And what I'll do is I'll take everything after this semicolon. So it sets up this variable here, or if it sets up a couple variables, sometimes it can do that. But I'll take everything after that semicolon and I'll copy that. And then I'll go out to a second site, which is DAF logic. That has an input field. I simply paste it in and then I click the obfuscate button again. Now once again, this is JavaScript. It's just difficult to read. Basically what it uses is the eval function and it puts together a function inside of a val and then immediately invokes that function later on here and passes in certain parameters. And by doing all of that, it puts back together this same thing here. Now one security note to be aware of, this uses eval. You don't want to do this or use eval in anything that is input. That's a security risk. So if someone, if a user is putting in data, you shouldn't be using eval on it. I use it in these types of situations because it's controlled and I know what's going on. So I then copy out that jump back and then I replace that portion after the semicolon I replace it with the rest of the code so if somebody opens up the JavaScript files from their browser and see this it's most likely going to prevent them from going to the trouble of figuring out what they're trying to get and so it helps obscure it helps hide the code and that is when I use this type of technique. If I have something like that and the client wants it hidden, wants it difficult to find, then I go ahead and use this method. So once I have that finished, I simply delete the original code. Now, one other way to get access to this so you can see that there is always a way to, to get the end results. But basically what it does is it prevents people that aren't super sophisticated in JavaScript to figuring this out. Now let me show you one more way which someone could have access to this. As we can see, it's declaring a variable here. So if I were to go to that website, refresh it, open it up, open up the console, I can get access to that variable. I can see the array that it contains. And so there's the API key. There's some of the answers. So there are ways around that. Now, some of the other, because of the second obfuscation method, some of the other things are more hidden. For example, can I get access to the answers object? Well, it's contained inside a function now, and so a little more difficult to get access to. But once again, it's still JavaScript. So it's not a security. It's not a means of security. But it can be a way to obscure certain things. Before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. Now, if you want to dive deeply into JavaScript, I provided discount links to all of my courses in the description section. And you're able to take those on Udemy. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.